evening. I'm really honored to be invited to this wonderful conference. India is a land of diversity. It has always been a land that has been inclusive of all genders, of all sexes, of all cultures. Once a country of diversity, once a country of its own beautiful history, with all the mythologies in our country, like the Ramayana and Mahabharata, celebrating the diversity of gender fluidity and our sexual orientation. Now, India has produced those beautiful gender fluid people called transgenders as beggars and sex workers. What was once a country of celebrating man becoming woman or woman becoming man and vice versa, which you can see in all our sculptures, scriptures, that diversity, that celebration. It was destroyed after the arrival of the British in our country with their narrow-minded politics, law, and values, it has definitely destroyed our country. Especially the Criminal Tribes Act, which they brought 200 years before. That act had criminalized almost 33 tribal communities, which includes the transgender people as well. Even though after the independence, India's independence in 1948, that act was scrapped, but the effect of that act, till today, it is prevalent. As a child, as a child born as a boy, I had gone through severe internal confusions. As a child, I had no family to support. I mean, I had a family, but it was difficult for my family to accept my gender fluidity. At 13, I told my parents that I, I wanted to be a woman. But India, which celebrates our sons and not daughters, my mother was not happy about it. She was, she was indeed shattered. And at 15, I wanted to commit suicide because I had severe discrimination and bullying and teasing at school where I studied. Not only by my fellow students, but also by my teachers. And at 18, I was sent to a mental health center where I was staying there for a month because they thought it was a disease. My family thought I mean, it is some kind of a disorder, but no treatment, nothing happened because I, have, I don't have an illness. People are born this way. It was not my choice, it was God's choice. And I'm happy about it. I've gone through so many challenges in life. And at school, if it was about discrimination and bullying, at college, it was even more. It was sexual violence against me, and it was so difficult for me to complete my undergraduation and post-graduation degree. And at 13, I had a friend who was a transgender who had been abandoned by her family. I was a kid who was in search of people like me. I became friends with her. She was indeed a sex worker, must be 20 years old. I was walking with her along a dark lane because our friendship was not accepted by our families. Suddenly, Two people, seven persons, seven persons in an auto rickshaw. They come very fast, pull her inside the auto rickshaw, kidnap her, and take her away. I run home, I run to my home, and I cried that whole night, not sleeping. The next morning, I came running towards her house. It was locked. I waited for her, and then she came, all her clothes torn, she was ripped apart, raped that whole night by seven people. And I told her, let's go to the police. She cried, and then I couldn't control. I cried, and she told me, the police will not help us, because I am a sex worker too. 
and they will only question me, not them. So that was when my first anger against the injustice being done to the transgender population, I have witnessed it. And since then, in so many periods of my life, I have seen so many of my community, especially the young people committing suicide, being murdered, being raped. Why does that happen in our society, in, in our India? Because a woman is uh, a woman is not celebrated, and being a transgender or being a woman is a shameful thing. I know almost all of my friends have been disowned by their parents, have been rejected by their parents. And at a young age, they step up to their homes and they begin to live with other transgender people. And what do they do for living, begging and sex work? And they become the targets of violence, rape. And when they go for sex work, they are prone to get raped and HIV positive. They become HIV positive and they die. They have no dreams. And what was their mistake being born this way? I was one of those lucky few people who have been accepted by our, my parent, parents, our families. I was the only, probably the very few in India who has been nurtured, educated by a family. And I was privileged. I should, I'm really happy that my family accepted me. My parents have a big heart. And I wish all our parents in India had that big heart. Only they have accepted our children, the transgender children. They wouldn't, you wouldn't see hijras begging on the streets. You wouldn't see the transgender community standing in line in cities waiting for clients. If that has to change, India has to accept transgender people. India has to understand that diversity is a beautiful thing and India is all about diversity. As personally as a transgender woman, I have I have at various points of my life, it has been a journey of huddles, but it has also been a journey of joy. My gender identity, people like me, our gender identity may be a mystery, but it is nothing different at all. I have a heart, I'm a woman, I've changed myself medically into a woman. I have a heart that of a woman as well. I long for relationships, I long for family, marriage, children. And I think, and I, think I have the right, I have the right to be loved, right to live a dignified life, right to marriage, right to children. And at no cost, I will be ashamed of my gender identity. I'm proud of being a At 25, I decided to start a small organization. It's called Sahodari Foundation. Sahodari means sister. Our organization is small. Since most of the transgender people in India are into begging and sex work, I wanted to change that. So we have been, for the past 10 years, I've been lobbying with our government, with the judiciary, with our academicians, universities, with our media. So much of hard work for activist people like me. And on April 14, on April 15, 2014, the Indian Supreme Court finally legally recognized transgender people. But law, policy, will that change people's mindsets? Will that change our families' mindsets? It will not. It won't. Our society has to change. And that through our education system in India, we can change. Our education system in India is so pathetic. It's only a mugging up and memorizing all data. It, doesn't, it does not really teach human values. It does not really teach how to respect each other. And 
and understand each other and embrace each other and understand that we are all equal. That has to be changed and we are working on that. As I said, as I know, I'm not a transgender, that's not my real identity. This woman is your identity that comes as a last. You're an artist, you're a fashion designer. I am an actor, I act in theatre as well as in films. I'm an artist, I do paintings, and I sell my paintings, and I fund the education of underprivileged trans women. And I published my first Tamil poetry book, named Kuri Aradhen. It means, Phallus I Cut. Uh, which is going to be soon translated into English as well. And my journey continues. My gender identity is not me. First of all, I'm a human being. I'm an Indian. I'm a human being. And I'm an artist. I'm an activist. I'm a writer. And my transgender or transsexual or hijra or whatever they call me is the least I'm bothered about. I have written a poetry, and I would like to read my poetry. It's actually in Tamil, but I translated it into English. It's called Phallus I Cut. No transcendental yoga I performed to transform myself into a woman. I cut my phallus, soiled in blood, and transcending death, I became a woman. Oh, you do not have ovary, woman you are not, said you. Well, oh stop. As you have removed your manhood, you are now a desolate tree with decayed barks. You have dug the grave of your own lineage. Live you may till your roots last, the earth that bears you shall give up one day, as you have not planted your branches below, said you. Well, I do not want that ovary to carry your excretions of caste and religion, religious fanaticism. <laughs> and I do not want in my ovary the gestation of those seeds to grow into a tyrannous tree. Many a woman has carried the seeds of your discriminations. Many a woman who has carried the seeds of your discriminations has made her ovary your laboratory. Luckily, I'm not a woman by birth. And that you deny to accept me as a one is in fact the freedom I got. I do not recite the gyno grammar you have crafted. Call me an error in nature and call me what you will. I know myself for sure who I am at any given hour. Renouncing the religion, casting away the caste, we are united as the rejected. Can you live this life we live? Can you become a woman without carrying a womb? Can you become a daughter without sucking your mother's breast? I can. Cut the phallus of your chauvinism and then, and only then, you tell me that I'm not a woman. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.